Uh, we've done these uh, Oxford-style debates at a number of events there. Uh, uh, we, you know, we're actually really quite privileged to have the two gentlemen that are going to be speaking uh, on these topics today. Um, the open group debate here will be about uh, we do not need to have a specific methodology like TOGAF for delivering EA. Modeling using Archimate is enough. And if you think that's an abstract uh, concept, you should come inside the open group and hear the raging debates that go around <laughs> the use of these two uh, specifications. Okay. So um, this is the uh, format of the debate programs that we operate. We have uh, some rules and procedures. We have a proposition declaration. At the beginning, as we present the proposition, we ask you to vote on face value of that proposition before the debate occurs, okay? So the proposition declaration uh, should be uh, consequential for the open group and or industry supported by the open group. And the proposition being debated today is that we do not need to have a specific methodology like TOGAF for delivering EA. Modeling using Archimate is enough. The four position is if you just fill out an Archimate model, you will have created an enterprise architecture good enough for decision making. And the against position is that using Archimate itself is not enough. One needs a method to guide the collection of the pertinent information to populate the Archimate model in order to create a model good enough for decision making. Now, what we're going to do is uh, ask Chris to take the four position, articulate it for us, and um, I, will, I will count him down. So every minute or so, I'm going to say, Chris, your time's running out, OK? All right, super. So Chris, you have seven minutes. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, so yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm basing the, the whole approach on uh, we don't need any stinking methodology, right? I mean, who actually reads any of that process stuff anyway, right? So my experience tells me uh, that people you know, do work and will look at uh, process guidance as a last resort if they have absolutely freaking no idea what they're doing or what they're uh, trying to achieve. And so think a little bit about um, uh, cooking, for example. So, you know, when you're trying to cook something, you go into the pantry, see what you got, and you're constrained possibly by, you know, the spices and oils and equipment that you have available and the things that are in your larder of various types of fruits and vegetables and meats and so on and so forth. And, you know, you can just go pull things out of that pantry and larder and put it together and start sauteing things, tasting it while you're... Um, uh, cooking it, uh, sharing that content with your uh, key stakeholders, your significant other or family that you're cooking for. See if they like the taste of it or not like the taste of it. You don't necessarily need to be an expert cook or be, you know, uh, skilled in the Culinary Institute of uh, America or other, uh, you know, French cooking uh, institutions. Namely, you know, people know good food when they taste it. And as I'm sure some of you might have heard, you know, most people don't care how you make the sausage. They just want to eat sausage. So my claim is if um, uh, we don't need guidance from um, things like TOGAF to construct useful enterprise architecture, because Archimate's pretty much got it all covered already in the, in the, the foodstuffs that are in our pantry. So if we take a look at what TOGAF talks about, and what Archimate talks about, one could make a claim that there's a little bit of uh, duplication. So for example, you know, TOGAF says that you should describe the, the business architecture and the data architecture and the technology architecture and that you should do gap analysis and then do planning. Well, Archimate's already got all that covered. Um, as some of you may know, there are a number of different you know, domains or layers within Archimate. So there's a business layer, there's an application layer, a data layer, physical layer. Uh, implementation and migration layer. Uh, motivation is a cross-cutting concern um, uh, where we've got specific elements, uh, particularly for you know, planning around uh, you know, gaps and requirements. So basically everything that you need to you know, uh, describe any possible scenario that you might encounter with enterprise architecture is already in the toolkit. So 
Um, however, I will defer to, uh, and I don't know if this is out of bounds, so you know, slap me if I'm uh, um, uh, changing things. There is another standard on which both Archimate and TOGAF are based upon, in my opinion, that is far more material, and that would be ISO IEC 4210 2011. Anybody familiar with that? Okay, so it's a mouthful. So it is an industry standard um, uh, description of architecture descriptions. And so what it talks about is A, all systems have architectures. Now the question is, is how well are they comprehended and understood by human beings? That's a different question. But that's the whole point of why we build models, is that we're trying to create human con contriven uh, contrivances of things that really exist, even though they may be rather abstract. Um, but it's based on the whole idea that we just don't start slinging models because we have a modeling tool or a modeling language. We want to do it with intent and purpose. So ISO 4210, uh, formerly known as another acronym, IEEE 1471, uh, basically says, well, before you start modeling stuff, make sure you understand who your stakeholders are. So that's obviously an important part of any type of engagement. Who am I doing this work for? What, and then using that to then determine what are, the, uh, what are their concerns, you know, what keeps them up at night. Three what minutes, the, Chris. What's that? Three minutes. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Um, what are the things that they need to know in order to make better decisions that are contextual to the problem that you're trying to solve? Use that to point you towards what's called a viewpoint library. Um, a, a, a collection of ways that you might render content in a useful fashion to address uh, stakeholder concerns, and then use that to actually synthesize views, which are, again, ways of gl getting glimpses into complex models that hopefully um, um, satisfy stakeholder uh, concerns. So my opinion is that, um, again, because Archimate's got all of the architecture domains and related domains related to planning and delivery um, already uh, encountered, um, that we don't need any, you know, stinking process or other frameworks to make things more complicated. So, for example, um, uh, again, my experience says that people will use a process description as a last resort if they can't get any better guidance. And so one of the best ways, and this is certainly uh, related to work that we're doing within the, the forums, is uh, creating examples. So I think a lot of people could do pretty darn good with creating good Archimate models if they saw examples of how, what other people had done in similar scenarios and or patterns. So namely the whole idea that I don't have to do something completely from scratch. I can basically you know, take a look at the Archimate standard where there's now a set of non-normative uh, viewpoints that are defined. So for example, you should create an introductory viewpoint to kind of frame up what the big picture is. Well, that's pretty much what TOGAF says in phase A architecture vision. You know, you need to create a business function um, um, viewpoint, a business process cooperation viewpoint, an application uh, you know, data relationship. And as you may know, there's a lot of different ways that we can express this content. There's no doubt that Archimate excels at the graphical rendering of this, um, but as you may know, there are multiple ways and forms that we can share content with people. Some is graphical, some might be you know, tabular reports, some might be uh, traceability matrices, all of which content can be extracted from a good um, uh, Archimate model. One minute, Chris. That's it? One more. One more minute. Um, and so my, my opinion is that if you have good situational awareness um, and trying to you know, embrace some of the best practices from Agile, which is to fail fast, fail early, have continual customer evaluation. Again, think it about cooking. You don't want to go off and do a black hole and do a bunch of modeling without any feedback because you could come out of that completely in left field. So build a little bit of model, show it to the stakeholder, have them taste it, think if, uh, have, get some response to see if they think it's addressing the stakeholder concerns. If it's not, adjust. Um, and uh, uh, take a different approach. But I think, again, just with the, the toolkit and the pantry that Archimate has to offer, um, that is sufficient, and we don't need anything like the TOGAF framework or ADM. You done? I'm done. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Um, now we'll ask uh, Andras to uh, take the position argument regarding Archimate itself is not enough, one needs to method to guide the collection of pertinent information to populate the Archimate model in order to create a model good enough for decision making. Andres, thank you for being with us. You have seven minutes. Um, well, uh, I think that in order to actually um, kind of answer this question, you really got asked uh, or address what is TOGAF? 
So first, um, I offer as evidence that uh, the Defense Department contributed TAFM as the seed to the open group. Um, and uh, TAFM has evolved into what we know uh, as TOGEF 9 uh, as it exists today. Um, you could say, uh, well, Andras, um, TOGEF is um, the ADM, and you'd be partially right. You could say that it's the continuum, and you'd be partially right. Um, you could say that it is a set of best practices, a framework, and a descriptive model of the layers, and you'd be partially right. You wouldn't be wrong. Uh, you could also say that it is a meta model uh, that is embodied in a tool called Archimate, and you'd be partially right, but you wouldn't be completely right. In fact, really, the reason why the DOD contributed um, TAFM to the open group was because that we had a budding, a very uh, active group of architect experts and um, ecosystem. So TOGEF is not necessarily just the ADM, although it's very important. It's not the continuum. That's kind of interesting and important. It's not the concept of mapping uh, business capabilities to enterprise architecture requirements. So that's really important, too. Um, and it's, uh, it's not creating a meta model that you know, results in a tool which allows you to automate it, although that is really important. Um, it is, however, if you look at it more closely, and uh, considering the fact that we're on TOGEF 9, uh, not a methodology at all, really, but a community that's working together to uh, evolve with the changing times, technologies, and techniques. And my true supposi supposition here is that um, while uh, Archimate and a meta model is important, because automation is good and uh, solid tools in which you actually construct uh, artifacts is, is a, a, a very good approach for consistency sake. It cannot represent you and what you do, and that is contribute different ideas, concepts, and change. And in fact, this whole debate and conversation is you know one group trying to wrestle control from the rest of you and turn it into you know a very concrete discussion about what TOGEF is it's not it's not your contributions it's what our tool does and and that is the wrong way to go in my mind is it is it important yes is it essential to ensuring consistency across uh, different uh, implementations? Absolutely. But is it what TOGEF is? No, TOGEF is the community. TOGEF is the contributions that you make. It is that non-normative um, set of uh, contributions and pieces of information that are in the continuum that are part of the industry and so on and so forth um, that aren't in the meta model. And in fact, this has been tried before. I mean, Grady Booch tried it with uh, Rational. and. Uh, their meta model approach, uh, you know, has has seen its best days, I think. Um, and the reason for that is they just didn't have what TOGEF has, and that's you. And it's a community of people that are constantly evolving it. And if the meta model has to change, really, you have to make the meta the changes to the meta model, uh, and and insert those cultural uh, kind of tweaks as the industry and technology changes. We're facing a huge inflection right now in cloud computing and artificial intelligence. And TOGEF has to change and will change with respect to that. And the community is going to make the difference here. So it's not just the methodology. It's the community, the approach, the work that you are doing that is actually going to inform the meta model and Archimate in the future. Um, I also think that uh, you know, there's 
when you're building a tool, you have this tendency to throw the kitchen sink at it. And Archimate, you know, has done a good job up to this point of actually uh, avoiding that. But you can see the trapping on the wall. They want to add all these things to it that, you know, then they can just say, look, this container, it is TOGAF, therefore we don't need all of this other stuff. But the problem is then it becomes like amber. It becomes solid and, and stagnant and it becomes just like the OMG, heartless and unevolving and, um, and, and at the end of the day, irrelevant. So you have to fight for your position in this process of defining method and capability and techniques because it's you who have gotten us to TOGEF 9, uh, not strictly a meta model by itself. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Okay, so what uh, the next step of this activity is, is to open the uh, floor up to audience questions and challenges to our uh, debaters here. Another question here. Yeah, I think I heard in the debate a challenge that with TOGAF, there might be some um, challenges with an agile methodology of doing a model and then getting quick feedback and then having it mature itself as opposed to more of a flow of when things should happen. So I, I would ask to address how TOGAF works well with agile or what challenges it has. Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, you know, so you could say that enterprise architecture generally, you know, isn't about uh, applying agile software development techniques, which, by the way, I'm a big proponent of. Um, within IBM, we, we use uh, IBM design thinking and agile development, right? But uh, the ADM kind of def defines a, a life cycle. It doesn't tell you that you can't use agile. It just says that you need to consider these things along the way. And we found actually within IBM that a lot of folks throw the baby out with the bathwater. Minimal viable products turn out to be, you know, minimally viable, and then they get thrown out into, you know, the uh, production space far too soon um, in many cases. So we kind of have to, I think, take a step back, uh, and this is part of the next phase of TOGEF. You know, how do you apply design thinking and agility concepts to uh, both enterprise architecture as well as software development from an enterprise structure point of view. Um, I think there is an intersection between things like IT for IT. Um, uh, you know, we've got the business architecture forum and we got TOGEF. To all kind of inform each other and we try to make sure that in the open, in, in the open group that they're all kind of consistent, but it, the methodology the process, you know, that represents all that is TOGEF. So I, I do agree. Next step is to ensure that everybody who is, you know, now has a good handle on agility um, can find those concepts within TOGEF. Uh, certainly. Well, and of course, it's not, you know, it, that's, it seems a little bit of a tangential uh, question to the core topic. Um, a, and as many of you may know, we actually had a debate on this topic for a full hour. Is do we need to change anything in TOGAF to address uh, Agile? Um, but I, I think, um, you know, t uh, taking the, you know, the opposite position of my worthy adversary, um, so whatever he says, I'm going to say the opposite, um, is one could look at TOGAF and particularly the ADM, um, as some of you may know, you know, the crop circle diagram with arrows flowing in a single direction sure as heck looks like a waterfall method to me. Um, and I think if you take it, interpret it too literally, you may be taken down the golden path uh, or the wrong path um, and miss the forest for the trees. Um, I'd, I'd like to suggest that I think we can embrace most agile software development principles very explicitly in enterprise architecture. So as some of you might know, you know, fail early, fail often, right? Continual customer interaction, we need to do that. Uh, continual integration, we need to be able to do that. And probably the, the trickiest one, in my opinion, um, where I think there's a lot of opportunity for improvement is, um, uh, you know, continual testing. 
but it brings up an interesting perspective. What does it mean to test an enterprise architecture? Because at the end of architecture work, you got a bunch of standards, plans, requirements, and models, right? What has changed? Nothing. What evidence do you have that any of it's gonna work? Zero. So you're taking a huge risk if you t go through the ADM in a very waterfallish fashion that you've really missed the, the whole point. So in my opinion, the most important consumers downstream of enterprise architecture is the solution delivery community, both in business and IT. Namely, they have to understand that content because they're the ones that actually execute the transformation based on the plans and content that we've built. And so uh, what we really want to do is instead of waiting till we get to the end of phase F, for example, in uh, the TOGAF ADM, uh, we want to be sharing content with those downstream consumers immediately and get their feedback and actually have them try to use it even before we're done. But we often get you know, interesting feedback from some uh, participants. We're like, well, I don't want to use this incomplete partial product because it's not done yet. And then that's where you need to go, where have you been the last 20 or 30 years? It's never done. You know, version one that I get you at the end of the cycle is not the last version, it's the first version. So let's really get those feedback loops going, get that evaluation. And I think, again, in particular, uh, just to get it back to the whole Archimate thing, that, you know, Archimate as a modeling language, it has a predefined vocabulary and constructs, is, you know, a platform for doing that continual uh, evaluation. Thanks, Chris. Do we have other questions? Sir? Mr. Armstrong made the interesting point of needing situational awareness in order to have a, a good Archimate architecture. The question I have is not, is, is how do you get there? How do you get there, from, how do you get there from here to there? The reason why I ask that is because most enterprise architects, myself being one of them, didn't grow up as an enterprise architect. We came in as a specific domain architect or programmer or developer or something along those lines and we were evolved or forced to evolve or were thrown at the wolves and we had to grow so the question would be given this particular argument the for and against if somebody was a single domain knowledgeable person a SME and only studied Archimate how could they become an enterprise architect versus somebody who had to study TOGAF and then could become or evolve to an enterprise architect? So without one or the other, and Mr. Armstrong? Sure, sure. Good luck. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, so, and, and I think just to make sure I'm grounded in the right reality, so if you're, if you're coming up the ranks through a particular professional development path that many of us have, that's not exclusive, of course, and there may be future entry uh, paths for future architects that have nothing to do with IT or anything like that. But despite that, that's a different topic because I think that was another debate that we had. Um, you, you know, what I would do, I mean, if you happen to be, you know, good at, you know, data architecture, the entry point into Archimate is to find, you know, your situational awareness. So what does Archimate say about data architecture? What are the constructs that represent that? So I, I kind of think about Archimate as a map um, of all the different places that you can go. So like when you go into a mall, right, it says you are here and then shows you the things that are around it. So you could go into the Archimate standard, you know, find the stuff about uh, data architecture. Hopefully it resonates, you know, with your experience, perhaps informs uh, some different, different perspectives. But then you look at the meta model and you go, oh, well, data objects um, are supposed to be related to one another, they might be transmitted through flow relationships and processes managed by applications and put into uh, data stores, or, or excuse me, as uh, artifacts as they're known in, um, um, in uh, Archimate. So I think, you know, the meta model of Archimate, you know, should be sufficient to kind of give you that orientation because ultimately what any meta model is trying to do, in my opinion, is synthesize a common language that we use to describe the problem domain. So what I think, you know, Archimate as a meta model is in some ways is the information architecture of enterprise architecture. Namely, what language do we use when we talk to stakeholders and other practitioners uh, when we talk about enterprise architecture? And Archimate's the lingua franca, you know, it's got it all figured out. But the big, pro the big issue is that you may need to adjust the local variable terminology that you've either personally been accustomed to using over the course of your career or the language that's being used uh, within the particular organization that you're doing work to say, hey, 
you know, there's 50 nouns that we can use to describe the entirety of the enterprise. You know, capability, course of action, tactic, strategy. And let's just agree on that common terminology, because again, as you probably have experienced, um, that is usually where the biggest problems start with the humans, which is I'm, we, we're using language casually as if we agree upon what these nouns mean. And to many people, the same word means two different things or two different words mean the same thing. Archimate covers all that with the definition of those fundamental terms and their possible relationships. So that's my, that's my position. Uh, TOGAF is, is far more than just the meta model itself. Uh, it is the community, it is the industry views, it is the experience that one has in uh, the industry itself in understanding how enterprise architecture is realized uh, in that context. Um, can you use a modeling tool to actually guide you? Sure. You can use more than Archimate. There are many out there. Um, I think the the question at hand within our community, you know, since Archimate is our meta modeling tool, is is it embody all of, of TOGEF? And you have to say, no, it doesn't. And the trap that you get caught in that the OMG and others got caught in was that if you do, then you begin to heap more and more stuff and functionality into that meta model or that tool and it becomes um, very rigid, heartless, and uh, essentially um, evolves very slowly as you see these paradigm shifts come about. And, um, and you have to be careful that you have this balance between you know, where that meta model is today and what you can put in that tool versus what's non-normative in TOGEF um, as well, you know, the guidance, the industry views, the community's perceptions, the, you know, experience that you get when coming to the conferences to debate the different uh, methods, uh, and your own expertise um, that you've gained over a period of time. If you just simply uh, and blindly follow the meta model uh, or hire somebody to do so um, versus somebody who is a certified you know, practitioner of TOGEF, you're probably going to get two separate different architectural views. So um, just to follow up on the situational awareness thing, there's a set of materials published in the TOGAF library called World Class EA Topic. And one of those white papers um, identifies a capability map for enterprise architecture. And in that capability map, it shows you how you might manage or lead or have tooling. And it's also situationally oriented. It says, as an architect, do, do you know whether you're doing architecture for projects, architecture for portfolios, architecture for strategy, architecture for managing third parties? What is your situation? Okay. So I took your question to be more oriented around uh, where, how do I know where I am, right? That's one mechanism for coming to understand that, and that is applicable whether you're talking about TOGAF or Archimate. So I think the situational awareness thing is really, really important because if you're an architect and you think you're doing enterprise architecture, but what you're actually doing is product or pro solution delivery architectures, you may be focused on the wrong outcomes. So that's just, so another question. I was driving at was slightly different, and that was how do you grow up to become an enterprise architect if you only study Archimate versus if you want to grow up to become an enterprise architect to study TOGAF with Archimate? That to me. And I think we kind of, or at least I try to answer that, is that you have to be part of the community and you have to get the uh, personal experiences in order to know the subtleties and differences about how you approach the structure of the enterprise architecture. I mean, Archimate is kind of at an inflection point right now where somebody brought up agility. Um, it has none of the concepts of design thinking uh, that it would need as we go into the future. So TOGEF is going to evolve to include design thinking uh, and agile scrum uh, types of uh, processes and approaches. 
I agree that um, it's a it's a bit waterfall-ish, although those lines in the ADM can go both ways. Um, there is no requirement for you to go absolutely one step at a time creating all the artifacts in the crop circle itself. And many, many uh, companies and organizations have modified the ADM uh, to, to be uh, more agile with respect to the um, challenge or development at hand. So TOGEF is very, very flexible, whereas Archimate, you know, and the meta model is um, kind of quite, you know, rigid and heartless and, um, you know, structured. And, and in my mind, you know, it, it is the embodiment of what people think of as waterfall. You know, you, want, you have to do one thing after the another after another. And, and we are going to change in TOGEF to be more agile and to uh, reflect uh, design thinking as we go into the next phases of TOGEF, and uh, well, they'll just have to adjust the tooling and the meta model to meet that. So you can't can't go the other way. So I think I think your question is a little bit about um, entering the profession and, and elevating yourself within the profession. So I you know I don't want to take steal you know take take everything away from TOGAF, but one could claim, and again, I'm focusing specifically on ADM, you know, the the method that's in it. You know, one of the great things about it is it does describe what do you need to do to do enterprise architecture. Um, and so I consider that to be descriptive method. But what it doesn't address, uh, which happens to be a big part of what, you know, we end up helping a lot of end user organizations with is how to do it. Prescriptive method and technique. Um, and so I think the Archimate uh, standard, you know, has a good uh, ecosystem in place to start trying to facilitate that. Um, you know, so TOGAF will say things you might want to think about describing the business architecture. Duh, you know. Um, what it doesn't say is how to do it, because that's, again, an intentional design feature to not make it too explicit. But Archimate fills that gap. So, you know, and it's not completely prescriptive in the sense that it says there is a single one and only one way to do it, but there are, it is more obvious and more clear, in my opinion, um, what, because I, I, again, I think a lot of people are like, can you just show me an example of a business architecture? Maybe that'll help me figure out what the hell I'm trying to do and what makes a difference. So one of the other great things that is going on uh, in the Archimate forum, um, and this has been a, a regular criticism um, that I know that we're trying to address similarly in the architecture forum with TOGAF, is please show me real world examples of this. Because again, I, can, I would consider an expert or even a new person, the first place they're gonna go is not to a 700 page document that talks about what, but more, I have a problem to solve, and I will notice whether I'm in the right place if I see an example that resonates with me or potentially uh, uh, my stakeholders. So for example, within the Archimate forum, um, we now have a library of Archimate models. And so because there is an, an exchange standard, you know, we can build content independent of sp specific vendors' tools. And of course, just to be clear, I represent a vendor, you know, that is in that space. Um, but we can create, you know, enterprise architecture models with Archimate using, uh, you know, Sparks Enterprise Architect, export it to Archimate Exchange format, and then that can be imported into Enterprise Architect or Biz Design or Archie. The whole point is, you know, as the consumer, you don't have to be using the same technology platform as the consumer is, but the ability to, again, provide real world examples of content, um, I think is the, is the real big thing that we need to focus on. It is not so much, and this was you know, similar uh, feedback I provided to the Archimate forum as well, which is I think Archimate is good enough in 3.0. I don't want to make the claim that it never should be updated or changed, but I think it is minimally sufficient or even perhaps a little bit more than that to handle just about any kind of architecture scenario you might find in. What we need to do is we need to provide guidance to people on how to use it not so much arguing about what it is. You know, look, Chris and I have known each other for a long time. We both know that we we're kind of in the same canoe here rowing. Uh, so it's kind of weird to be kind of uh, giving opposite viewpoints here for what really is one thing, and that is 
um, TOGEF and the realization of a notation for TOGEF and then the meta model that supports tooling, right? So we have this concept in the open group of executable standards, that is that a standard is not just a white paper and a specification that it actually has some code or implementation behind it. So certainly Arkham 8, is, you know, kind of uh, meets that definition in spades. Um, but you cannot, but there is a process by which we actually are realizing both the notation and the modeling, uh, as well as all the best practices. And that starts with the community, starts with a debate, starts with contributions from other companies, and, and then, you know, goes through a wrangling process um, where we come up and distill that down into a set of capabilities that we think are appropriate for TOGEF. I mean, TOGEF's not really an enterprise architecture methodology by itself. And what it needs to do is actually have the ADM broken down into lifecycle types like Agile, uh, as well as um, almost waterfall. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like the term waterfall, you know, because it's almost never used with the exception of defense aerospace engineering requirements, right? Um, that follow a very, very prescriptive stepwise process. Um, most everybody's methodology today is agile in some way. So um, what you can't do is start from the tool side and go the other way because that'll never work. And what you don't want to do is, is have the community hijacked in lieu of a, you know, a model specification that says, a line with a dot in the back of it uh, with an arrowhead, you know, means this and only this, um, because you won't have all the other subtleties uh, basically kind of um, readily available, all those non-normative elements that you should be considering in the, the debate process itself. So Archimate definitely has a place and it will continue to evolve. They have their own challenges and risks too, one of which is trying to add too much to the model and the meta model itself, because everybody is basic. Some people are saying like, I don't use Arkham 8 because it doesn't do this, that, or the other. Well, the temptation by the tooling folks are to try and shove that into the tool. And maybe, maybe that isn't gonna work out so well over a period of time. It certainly hasn't worked out well. It didn't work out well for us within IBM. Eventually the tools became kind of heavyweight um, difficult to maintain over a period of time. Uh, so there's a trade-off, um, and we no longer actually produce those tools in, in the form that they were in the last five, 10 years. So, Chris, I mean, what's your point of view? Um, well, I also think that um, we might be uh, potentially at an inflection, inflection, an inflection point in the profession, not to, uh, but, and not to leave, leave anybody behind. But you know, it is the 21st century, right? I last I checked. Uh, my opinion, and again, th this is not just because I represent a tool vendor, but also as a practicing architect, I don't know how you can possibly support agility without tooling. I believe they are required synonymous. I mean, if you think about, again, solution delivery with the tool chains that are in place, Agile cannot be done without sophisticated tooling that take up the human um, administrative administrative uh, administrative maintenance things that really impede agility um, and they are not value add. So my opinion is that moving forward, um, if you do not have a tool and you are not managing your content rigorously and, f and formally in a repository, you cannot possibly do agile enterprise architecture. And the case in point being, I'm sure you guys have heard this notion of accounting. And people, there is you know, generally accepted accounting principles, double entry accounting systems. How many people do accounting on cuneiform clay tablets? Or use abacuses, or use double uh, green bar paper, right? And actual double entry stuff. It's impossible. You must use a tool to keep on track of your financial stuff. And I would claim, you know, just to continue that analogy, you do not have to be an expert in double entry accounting to understand a financial statement to make good decisions. So again, the whole idea of the implementation of the meta model and all that sort of stuff, those are implementation, implementation details, making the sausage. But to keep up with the pace of change in today's world, you've got to have a tool.
if there are no more questions, then we'll close the floor and move towards summation. Just one last check to see if we've got any questions. Okay. So, Andres, would you mind uh, giving us your against summation? You have five minutes, sir. Well, a whole five minutes. Indeed. Um, <laughs> so, again, TOGEP is a community, a process, uh, and it is realized in tools. Um, but it, it, you cannot essentially distill it down to just the tool itself. Um, the community, it, you know, defines the methods, the capabilities, the continuum, the different pieces and parts of TOGAP that inform what, a, what are the proper tools. Absolutely, tools are part of cloud native development. Couldn't agree with that more. Um, but that doesn't mean that TOGAF is the tool. TOGAF is realized in a tool. And TOGAF is more than uh, the methodology itself. It is the community, and it is you, and your participation in the, in the evolution of the uh, TOGAF um, capabilities in the framework itself. Don't forget, F stands for framework. Uh, in TOGAF. It doesn't stand for methodology. And that should be front and center of your thinking when considering uh, which point to vote for. Thanks. Thank you, Andres. Uh, so I guess uh, my, my summary would go back to, you know, Archimate uh, has, uh, I think, a good representation in the domains that we care about in enterprise architecture. You know, strategy, business, application, data, technology, uh, implementation, migration, motivation. It describes the language that we use or should be using when we talk with stakeholders about how we describe and understand the enterprise landscape. Um, we can go back to the good old days. Uh, some of you guys might remember a guy called John Zachman. Ever heard of him? Right? Um, and some of you may know, I, I don't know if you've had the pleasure of seeing him speak, he's very terribly entertaining. Uh, but it wasn't only until recently, to be honest, he moved to, you know, he got off of his foils. Um, and when asked, how come you're not using PowerPoint and modern technology, he's like, well, nothing's changed. It's all the same. It's, and I would suggest he's true, it's true to a point, it's still the same. And so, yeah, hey, if the Zachman framework, which is a taxonomy and a hint at a meta model, right? The who, what, why, when, where, and, and how at five different levels of abstraction. You know, if that's good enough for John, Z John Zachman that started this whole profession called enterprise architecture, well, surely it's good enough for us now, right? Um, I also think that, again, just in summation, um, we want to, again, have that situational awareness, build content and models incrementally, um, giving and getting feedback from our critical stakeholders as we do it, because as I'm sure you've also heard, you know, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. Um, we want to make sure that, again, we do not want to build models that populate repositories and exploit functionality of pieces of software, but if nobody cares about them and they don't influence decision making, again, fact, data-based decision making, then I would suggest uh, uh, you've uh, you've missed the mark, um, and uh, you know I think the it, as we move into the 21st century, uh, we really need to start thinking about how do we build a skill set for people to use such things because I would agree that there is possibly a gap um, on. Again, the critical competency that I believe uh, that you need to have as a you know 21st century architect in the digital you know world. So I, I don't know if you guys are involved in digital digital business transformation, right? Well, to me, well to do that, you need to digitize your enterprise. And what does that mean in practicality? You put it into a repository in some way that aligns with a meta model. How can you again possibly make informed decisions? I mean, it's great to digitize your service channels and your customer facing things, but you really need to do pure digitization, which is actually create a representation of your organization and your ecosystems in that uh, repository. So I think, you know, um, we can maybe say, we, is it time to move past what is enterprise architecture and move into what does enterprise architecture do for me? And I think that's where Archimate and modeling uh, can solve that problem. Thank you, Chris. 